Oke, okay, thank you very much. Assalamualaikum warahmatullahi wabarakatuh. Uh, salam sejahtera. Uh, good morning for everyone. I hope you are doing well and uh, still in good uh, condition, uh, healthy. Because now in pandemic situation, we should uh, keep our health uh, properly. Uh, first of all, I would like to thank to uh, all the student association in uh, medical record of the Poltekas Kemenkes uh, Tasikmalaya for inviting me to share my story. Of course, I would like to thank uh, also to the Ibu Director, Ibu Ani, and uh, Bapak Kajur, Pak Didi. Uh, uh, allowing me to share my experience in this uh, wonderful occasion. Uh, I think uh, all of you already uh, uh, watching the uh, presentation by Ibu Diana. Uh, I think Ibu Diana has explained a lot about all about the telemedicine and things. And here I would like to share my experience uh, uh, being involved in telemedicine activities uh, since 2015 including my activities in Ministry of Health, helping for the Temenin, Telemedicine Indonesia. Also recently, also uh, we conducted uh, assessment with UNDP, United Nations Development Program, for all the uh, television provider in uh, Atensi, Aliansi Telemedicine Indonesia, especially during the pandemic and some other uh, experience as well. So uh, please allow me to share my presentation here. Can all of you see my presentation here? See it all right? Okay, Mr. Surahio. Okay, then. Yes, thank you very much. So then uh, I would like to start my presentation here. Please uh, also inform me if my time is uh, going to be finished. Yeah. Okay. So then, uh, yes, uh, the title will be uh, Telemedicine Implementation in Medical Practice in Indonesia. Actually, if we are talking about telemedicine, uh, by the definition, uh, I think Budiana already, already explained a lot. So, but here uh, we will see how can be implemented in, especially in developing country like Indonesia, and also with a lot of challenges like the infrastructure limitation, maybe uh, low digital literacy from the from the citizen, and many other things. So here, uh, let me uh, show some uh, story about it. Okay, I think you already. Uh, was explained by Pa Arif about my CV. So uh, let's start about the framework uh, from the Ministry of Health. Uh, uh, in, in, in 2020, the Ministry of Health already also uh, again uh, described uh, what is uh, four pillars of the digital ecosystem of health services in Indonesia. The first one is about the electronic health record. I think this is all uh, about your field. For all students who are studying uh, here in, in, in this uh, Poltekas and maybe from other uh, university or institution, uh, it focusing in health information system, local system, and web or cloud-based system. We're also talking about the e-pharmacy. E uh, this is about the pharmaceutical electronic system, electronic prescription, and the pharmaceutical marketplace. In during the pandemic, this is also very, very important, especially from PPPOM. They also uh, is the best regulation to support us to buy uh, like drug and many other things uh, during the pandemic because uh, is it uh, very dangerous if we go outside by, by ourselves so that you can use Gojek, Grab and any other thing to buy online prescription. Of course, with all the, uh, we have to comply with the regulation. The other one is for the mobile health. I think this is also very, very important for Indonesian people because as you know, uh, 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 internet penetration and also the use of mobile health in Indonesia is very, very high. I will uh, show you in the data afterward. And today we will be also more focusing on telemedicine. Uh, as we've said, like uh, Ibu Diana explained before, we also talking about telehealth and uh, with a broader uh, perspective, but also we can see in telemedicine, we can also use for uh, teletraining, teleconsultation, teleeducation, telemonitoring, and many others. And yes, teleconsultation and telemonitoring will become very important during the pandemic, especially for the self-quarantine, or we can say in Indonesia is isolation, isolasi mandiri, right? 
This is definition, I think already explained by Budiana, but if we refer to uh, WHO, it's very simple. This is in 2016. Delivery of healthcare services where patient and provider are separated by distance. This is simple one, right? And uh, we use ICT. Uh, what can be used for the ICT to support this activity? For the diagnosis and treatment of disease and injuries, for the research and information, continuing education of health professional. And what kind of ICT can be used? You can refer to the ITU, International Telecommunication Union, uh, also one of the body from the UN. It can be used for radio, television, telephone and mobile phone, computer, and of course, internet. So if you refer to the radio, like uh, two meter bands of radio, if you are familiar with uh, HT and it's totally used by, let's say, security people in banking and many other areas. Uh, if you go to the rural area in, let's say, in Sumatra, Kalimantan, and Papua, uh, conversation among uh, medical doctors and uh, primary healthcare, sometimes they just use the uh, radio uh, because it's the easiest way and the most reliable technology can be used in, in a rural area, something like that. So uh, we cannot rely on internet at all because, you know, the, 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 the problem of the infrastructure is still exists there. And uh, basically, uh, by WHO, we can divide into two groups of telemedicine. One is uh, client to provider. I mean, this is directly from the doctor to the medical doctor to the patient. But again, uh, the WHO highlight this uh, under the condition that it complements rather than replace face-to-face -face delivery of health services. So meaning that it's only for the complementary. Yeah? And the other one will be a provider to provider telemedicine. Uh, I think I will be explaining later on uh, about uh, how we can use Tamanin or telemedicine in Indonesia to uh, support the teleconsultation among medical doctors from primary health care to the district health, uh, health uh, district hospital to the uh, center hospital and many other things. And if we refer to the HIMMS, yeah, Health Information Management uh, System, uh, there are many uh, levels actually in the telemedicine and in Indonesia maybe uh, we uh, at the moment we only reach in the level two at least yeah and the level zero is about the uh, just beginning the telemedicine start, uh, might be initiated by the government also with the private provider and so on and there are some also education socialization about the use of telemedicine maybe also just use WhatsApp line, uh, yeah, uh, any other technology like Skype for video call or even SMS texting, uh, even also the older technology like uh, radio, yeah, uh, two meter radio and so on. And then uh, because of the uh, use of the better bandwidth for the infrastructure, we can use video conference for the level one to support provider to providers consultation and education like uh, we are doing now. And also we can use video call and line and Skype and many other things. And also goes to the level two, we can also transmit the personal clinical data and customized education to the patient through some dedicated portal and so on. And if we go further to the level three, we can use some specific uh, uh, camera to take a picture, maybe to record the video, like uh, maybe for the teledermatology, for ophthalmology, maybe also for the uh, Economies and many other things. So, uh, watching something, we can use some simple uh, digital ECG, or maybe we can use digital USG and many other things. Or even we can also uh, scan our X ray uh, image using a high resolution scanner. Or maybe you are familiar with the CR or computed radiology and many other. So, then it goes to six, five six, seven, and many other. So there are many levels actually. So then uh, Indonesia, uh, fortunately, we already started as seriously since a few years ago, and now we are going to level two, three, and so on, something like that. Hopefully we can go to until level seven someday. Yeah? Uh, so also why uh, telemedicine is very important in Indonesia, if we see the distribution of the uh, health facilities, the, you can see this is, Imbalance, yeah? uh, this is again imbalance. You can see most of them are in western part of Indonesia, like in Java, Sumatra, Bali. You see this like 50%, 24%. And we see this uh, not enough health facilities in uh, eastern part of Indonesia. As well as you see the distribution of the 
uh, specialist ya, yeah? like uh, let's say pediatrics, optic, internist, and so on. If you see, this is a, a little bit old uh, data uh, uh, gathered from the Ministry of Health website. Uh, it's 2015, uh, but mostly, yeah, uh, more, almost the same with uh, right now. I think more than at, at the time is only 80%, 83% are in Western Indonesia, but nowadays maybe just like 70, uh, hopefully going to 60%. Yeah, I think there are many also uh, Putra Dera uh, goes back to, the, to their kampung and helping people there, something like that. But this is also the challenge for us. Yeah. And as you uh, explained by the definition of WHO, we have two groups of the telemedicine. One is the between provider to provider, and we already have uh, telemedicine in this autonomy. I will tell you the story about this. It uh, belongs to the Ministry of Health. And also we have what we call integrated referral system, OSIS router, also belong to the Ministry of Health. But if talking about the direct uh, telemedicine between the doctor to the patient, we have uh, from Ministry of Health, uh, it, uh, they have uh, Sehatpedia uh, from the hospital to the client. There are many, especially also in doing the Isuman. I think uh, during this pandemic situation, uh, a lot of uh, hospital develop their, uh, out of extend their uh, hospital information system to serve uh, their existing patient using some kind of technology like a simple one using WhatsApp or some dedicated application. Like uh, here, I uh, uh, choose the example from Sarjito because I am from Yogyakarta. Uh, from the Sarjito Hospital, it has what we call uh, Tekon. Uh, Tekon in, in English, eh, sorry, in Japanese, what meaning uh, asking, yeah? Telemedicine, telemedicine consultation. Also, there are many kind of telemedicine uh, conducted in primary healthcare. I think there are many uh, primary healthcare or Puskesmas already has the already have the uh, simple system pharmacy for Puskesmas, and they also extend their services to enable the, the doctor to support the co communication uh, consultation uh, using some kind of technology like WhatsApp or maybe some specific application. And of course, there are many uh, private uh, company who are developing all the uh, telemedicine solution like uh, here in the group called Atensi, Aliasi Telemedicine Indonesia. You are familiar with Hello Doctor, Dr. Amy Arthur. And also there are many other group as well outside there. Eh? This is the story about the uh, history about the telemedicine uh, Indonesia. And this is the official one because unofficial one we already started many, many years ago as well. But in Ministry of Health, uh, officially we started the uh, telemedicine program in 2012. Uh, it supported uh, for the tele-ECG and tele-radiology. Uh, I think Buidiana already explained that tele-radiology is one of the oldest telemedicine in the world. And uh, yes, uh, it worked, but uh, somehow at the time, you know the, about the limitation of the infrastructure, like at that time it's only 2G, 3G, and so on. So many hospitals couldn't uh, send uh, high quality image, then it's uh, become uh, difficult and difficult, and so that it didn't work well. And then in 2014, uh, the Ministry of Health upgraded the system to the better teleradiology uh, system. I think it's very good uh, system, actually. It's still working now. But somehow, again, uh, also like 2012, uh, 14, also uh, goes to the 2016, it involves the private sector, meaning that in uh, 2016, we also uh, hired uh, a television solution from one uh, private company. Uh, actually, it was initiated in Makassar and adopted into Ministry of Health. Uh, for the tele-ECG, USG, and teleconsultation. It's a very good uh, program, but the uh, Ministry of Health has to pay annual rent. It's, it'll take a lot of money. And then in, finally, in 2017, we decided to develop uh, the telemedicine system by ourselves called Tomanin. Yeah, be my friend <laughs> for, for, for the uh, simple meaning. Uh, but it sort of, uh, stands for telemedicine Indonesia, and it's free. So you, it can be used for the, all the health facilities, not only for the government, uh, also for the private sector as well. And I just you register to the Ministry of Health, you can be used. Again, this is for health, be among 
uh, health facilities, yeah, um, provider to provider, and so on, so on, so on, something. Like and this is the 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 Tomlin uh, website. Uh, uh, this is a web-based application. It's very easy to use. Uh, as you see here, you can see some menu here, like uh, you got the all the data of the patient. We can put everything there, or you can just read the NIK, yeah, and give you some basic uh, information with the patient. Uh, then uh, after the word uh, medic and the the, the 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 GP will uh, add some additional information about that. It's like resume medicine, yeah, something like that. And we can use then uh, we want to let's say have a consultation to uh, upper or the uh, referring hospital uh, 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 in kabupaten or in provinsi, yeah. You go there using teleradiology, USG, or teleconsultasi. I think. Uh, not only for USC and ACG, but also you can consult uh, from the dermatology problem or ophthalmology for the uh, kids problem and many other things, something like that. Yeah, it goes well, but we still doing uh, some evaluation to improve and improve the, the and luckily also we have the regulation supported. In 2019, we have uh, Parliament Kes, number 20 uh, to support uh, the uh, telemedicine uh, among providers yeah, something like that. this is how it works uh, basically symbol the technology is, is already there many many years ago uh, after uh, especially if looking or comparing to the uh, technology used by the banking system yeah and it's much more, more sophisticated this one is very very simple actually uh, the server is itself in, in the ministry of health uh, and we can use just any kind of internet connection we can install application. We can use just a web uh, notebook, PC, or mobile phone. Connect to the website of Temanin, uh, doing login, uh, send some data about that, send some picture or movie or whatever, then uh, to be sent to the uh, specialist, and they will read and give some expertise and send back to the. But good thing about the telemedicine in Indonesia or Temanin is everything is uh, centralized in Ministry of Health. Uh, because many, a lot of like GP um, asking me why but using Tamanin, but we already have WhatsApp, we already have email and blah, blah, blah. But again, WhatsApp email is uh, isolated. It's only in their system. So the government cannot uh, monitor, can see, cannot see the, let's say, the, 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 what's the problem in, in, in the, the, the population or something like that. And also, of course, this is also supported by the security system like HTTPS and many other things. But in the future, also, we will implement like digital signature and many other things. Yeah. Okay. At the moment, uh, it is, I, I took this data like you know, a week ago, maybe, as Rumasak uh, Hospital already is 61, and uh, the referring health facilities like uh, primary health care or district hospital is 175. And a lot of uh, medical doctors also involved here, like uh, radiologists, uh, 135, and many other things. This is the utilization of Tomanin. Uh, I extracted from the server of Tomanin. Uh, luckily, also uh, in Sajito, we also have a, a system to, to directly access. Uh, we are also supported by the INSTI, Installasi Tele Technology Information from Sajito Hospital. So then we can see in the dashboard that uh, recently in 2020, the most active province is from Sumatra Utara, uh, Papua, Papua Barat. It's very interesting because you see in the rural area is more active than people in Jawa Tengah or maybe in Yogyakarta or in Jawa Barat. As you see now that, yeah, it's easy because if you live in uh, uh, Malaya and Yogyakarta, you can go easily to uh, health facilities, but people who live in rural area in Papua and many other things, they have to travel like five hours um, to taking a boat or many other things. It's very, very complicated about that. This is also the the some uh, medical data that we uh, retrieve from the server. The pemanfaatan telemedicine, the use of telemedicine, and like the, mostly is for tele uh, radiology. Uh, as you see something like here in the graphic. Uh, also, some of them uh, try to uh, employ, try to use the teleconsultasi and the USG, but uh, still very, very low number. So we have to push, we have to um, doing more uh, education, uh, promoting them to, to use more, especially in uh, uh, during the pandemic. Uh, uh, 
this is the one of the same example from telemedicine provided by the hospital i captured it uh, from the sarjito hospital we it has a uh, take on telemedicine consultancy but again here in telemedicine because we refer to the regulation permenkes 20 and also last year uh, minister of health uh, delivered uh, surat edaran 303 2020 to use the telemedicine during the pandemic and also for per council number 74 and uh, in, in hospital mostly they only use telemedicine for existing patient meaning that they already have the medical record inside the the hospital and also they have to have a informed consent something like that because it's, uh, we're talking about the patient safety delivering the best service any other thing something like that. this is also be done uh, in another, another hospital in rsjm and maybe in thaisa malaya and many other things so it's usually in telemedicine provided by the hospital uh, is only support for existing patient or the new patient with some procedure yeah pro uh, the proper procedure like uh, how to record the medical record properly uh, how to get the informed consent and many other things also, the Ministry of Health also has a mobile application uh, to support the telemedicine called Sihatpedia. Uh, it started in 2018 in February. Uh, it also goes wider and wider with some of the features uh, uh, showing here, like for the emergency medical ID, medication, and journal, health article, chat, and many other things. And during the COVID, also they, it has some feature to support like from the sharing the COVID article, how to prevent the hoax uh, or false uh, information and many other things. Of course, during the pandemic, uh, it also support teleconsultation for the everyone who are doing the self quarantine or issue month. Uh, if talking about the uh, private company who are serving on telemedicine, uh, I took an example here from the Atensi, Alliance Telemedicine Indonesia. Uh, there are many actually at, at the time we are conducted assessment is only 29 members but now it's growing bigger and bigger so we conducted uh, i was hired by the undb uh, to do the assessment and we are trying to understand how the private uh, television provider serve the indonesian people uh, using the telemedicine services yeah uh, so they conducted in uh, during the november 2020 to January to 2021, yeah, and mostly uh, they already has uh, some service throughout Indonesia, but some of them are only in Java, in Sumatra, and so on, and also many of them also already has uh, have uh, cooperation with the health facilities because uh, if you refer to the telemedicine regulation, uh, the medical director uh, has to ha has to have. Uh, STR and SEP, right? So meaning that they already work in one of the healthcare uh, facilities, something like that. So they also have many of them already have an ethic committee ownership because we are talking about digital things. Every data of the patient will be sent, will be distributed, will be uh, transferred uh, using the internet, using the public uh, uh, network. And if there is an accident, someone can see it and so on. Uh, how can we handle if there is problem, something like that? and how they can also use the medical data of the patient properly of course it should have uh, ethic committee yeah? and most of them uh, in, in the composition of the uh, hr on the human resource um, medical specialist gp of course and the, the the biggest one a dentist psychotherapist nutritionist and many other things sometimes like yeah and here um, the most profited telemedicine services is uh, about teleconsultation between patient and health worker and mostly about the conversation between the patient and the doctor is that also about the publication of the information online direct services which sometimes they also will be collaborating with like uh, Gojek or grab and many other things and the most accessed telemedicine service again same thing is about the teleconsultation and health article the other one is about the uh, online appointment and blah 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 something like that if you see here uh, because of the pandemic most provided online consultancy is more uh, mostly about the COVID itself uh, the next one will be for the internal medicine like endocrinology oncology geriatric and so on dermatology and many other things 
And as you see, because of the highest penetration of the internet use, uh, region with the highest telemedicine user uh, are from DKI Jakarta, West Java, East Java, Central Java, and so on. Uh, still, uh, we have to uh, expand more in uh, rural area outside of Java Island, something like that. Okay. And the user, uh, mostly a uh, woman, and I think this is also a very unique uh, situation, but in Indonesia, mostly uh, people in, in family, people who most care about the health is mother, right? <laughs> or maybe someone uh, who are there. So they meaning that the, the, the demographic of the user of telemedicine is mostly a woman, 63%, and the age uh, are between 30 to 50 years, yeah? I mean, the, yeah, one of the most established uh, uh, citizen in Indonesia, something like that. And the consultant fee, uh, yeah, surprisingly, it's not that uh, expensive from 10,000 to 20 uh, for the general consulting fee, uh, some of them 40 to 60. And uh, for the specialists, it's uh, like about 150 or 200,000 uh, rupiah. I think also the same like uh, when we sit for uh, offline, something like that. Okay. The payment method also because nowadays is uh, very easy. This can be have co co cooperation with online payment application or system uh, from GoCheck, uh, GoPay, OVO, Dana, Link, IJ, and so on. They also support the credit card, transfer bank, and many other things. And some of them already also has a cooperation with the uh, insurance company, uh, but not many something. Like that. This is also like. Uh, uh, at the moment, BBGS uh, doing some evaluation, doing some mm -hmm. pilot tests to support the, the telemedicine uh, in, I think, like seven or ten areas, yeah, to, to use the BBGS because uh, the telemedicine also has issue about the about the finance, yeah, about the, the, the payment and so on. This is also, I think, is typical in developing country. If you see. Uh, again, infrastructure challenge in the rural area of Indonesia. This is mm -hmm. I took by myself uh, when I traveled with a uh, team of the Ministry of Health uh, to check, to uh, prepare, to implement the tamanin. We see that like here in South Sapor in West Papua, and the, the place is like, it takes five hours by car uh, from Sorong. Uh, you have to go through the, the jungle the forest uh, without any signal at all. The speed is very low. The, that time also there's only 2G from the provider. This is 2019 that I took the picture. Uh, and uh, they have to have the T-shirt, yeah? With a small upper, uh, very small aperture terminal uh, using satellite. That's why it's very low bandwidth and also it's very easy to be influenced by the weather. And also this is not a proper <laughs> implementation because uh, we don't have cage here and many other things like that. If you go all to, to the Orange Bari, uh, also another place in West, uh, West Papua, it's luckier than South Sapor because near there, uh, there is a tower from Telkomsel for 4G. But again, the speed is only, only 4.6 something. Uh, before, in 2017, I visited there. The speed was 25 Mbps, but uh, nowadays it reduced like only 4 or 5. You know why? Because there are no so many users, so that's why uh, telecom cell decreased the, the speed. Uh, otherwise, they uh, they have a high maintenance uh, cost, something like that. This, this one also is very rural. In Tiong Ohang in 2019, I uh, accompanied uh, team of uh, the uh, Ministry of Health, Common uh, We traveled like uh, eight hours from Samarinda by car and continued by like nine hours by Put, uh, in the river in Mahakam Ulu, and we uh, reach in Teong Ohang, it's near the Malaysia border. Uh, it's very, very rural, and also speed is very, very low, and they only only have a uh, yeah? uh, From the telecommunication provider, we have only telecom send, uh, but it only for 2G. So even SMS is very difficult to send. Uh, over there, yeah? uh, but luckily, since many, uh, like three or five years ago, uh, the, the government already uh, initiated Project Palaparing to expand their uh, internet backbone to everywhere in Indonesia using fiber optic uh, in the sea. Yeah? Uh, then this is very good thing. Uh, I hope like uh, next year, uh, so many places in rural area will have a good uh, internet connection. Then we can use uh, more digital help to, to support 
any kind of health services there. And also, of course, uh, ethical problem will be also the the issue that we should be uh, should be considered because uh, in telemedicine the, there are many stakeholders. We have patient, doctor, the technician, the paramedic, the provider itself, the pharma industry, policy maker, and many other things. So meaning that we should consider how we can handle, we can keep the privacy, the confidentiality, uh, informed concern, of course, yeah, for the doctor as well. Uh, it has a responsibility of the best treatment of the data use of the treatment and research uh, and many other things. Uh, and also for the service provider and administrator as well, we also have to follow some issues about the ethics to be uh, considered like uh, cross-border culture. Uh, you are a medical doctor in Surabaya, you are serving a patient from Papua, we have different cultures. Sometimes there is miscommunication and so on. Then we should understand about that. Right? Yeah. Responsibility of right transmission of conferencing data as well. And all this also about the COVID is a global pandemic. We are talking about telemedicine service from other countries as well, like from Australia, from uh, Singapore, Malaysia, and many other things, and so on, something like that. This is the opportunities anyway. Uh, you see that uh, from the hot suit to 2020, we see that the uh, internet penetration in Indonesia is very uh, high, very big. We have population like 270 million, but the mobile connection is more than that. Yeah, We have 345 million, meaning that uh, we have more mobile phone than the people itself. So, it doesn't mean that everybody in Indonesia has a mobile phone, but somebody in Indonesia has many mobile phones. That, that, that is 200 million, and active media, uh, social media user is very big as well, 170. But the problem as well, like when I visited the rural area, is for the digital literacy. Many people uh, already have mobile phone, but they cannot use it properly. If you're talking about hate speech, hoax, uh, bullying and many other things also very, very important to cope about that, in, including the health services as well. Uh, as you see, also the, the the use of the mobile connection or internet connection to find the health or fitness and nutrition application also uh, growing uh, bigger and bigger. Uh, last year was like 17% uh, 2020 uh, becoming 23%. Uh, I think people get more and more, especially on during the pandemic, because it's not the, the latest uh, information. If you see in the during pandemic, I believe uh, people who are looking uh, COVID information is very, very big. Yeah, yeah. That's why also Minister of Health uh, trying to support uh, the how to prevent hoax, yeah? because so many people are Say, uh, believing the, about hawks and and yeah many thing many bad things happen there. Uh, here uh, about the regulation, luckily uh, government already uh, supported. Uh, we got uh, as I told before, permanent 2020 uh, in year of the 2019. It's support for tomorrow or among provider yeah, and uh, last year. Uh, uh, Minister of Health uh, issued uh, Surat Edaran. Uh, this is very, very low actually, but it's good because it allow us to use telemedicine or any kind of technology to support teleconsultation during pandemic, yeah, to 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 help people uh, stay at home and can still have uh, some health services on that. And per council as well, uh, also uh, issues the per council number 74 last year. And from BBPOM also support the e-pharmacy number eight to 2020, control of drug and food that are distributed online and still many other uh, regulation. So also just like a few days ago, like uh, 12 days ago, uh, Minister of Health announced the Keputusan Menteri is much uh, higher and much stronger than surat edaran before about the pedoman pelayanan kesehatan melalui how to handle the health services using telemedicine during the uh, pandemic COVID something like that. So then uh, again we have uh, regulation is good one. I hope someday it also goes to be uh, permanent kesia peraturan menteri. Again it support the other group client to doctor telemedicine. Between provider is already there, but client to doctor, doctor to client telemedicine, we still have only 
keputusan menteri. But it's still better compared to the last year surat edaran. So here like some uh, chart, flow chart how to handle the the isoman or uh, self quarantine for the people who are uh, having some uh, symptom from the COVID. Yeah, and you have to stay at home. Uh, but still can has uh, access to health services using telemedicine, any kind of technology, even just WhatsApp or SMS or phone call. Uh, you see this uh, confer confirmed patient with PCR, with no symptom or mild symptom, patient with contact history with compound person, patient with mild symptom, and then we can have a consultation with doctor via telemedicine, assessment, anamnesis, and so on and so on. And and then they will be referred to conduct the self quarantine program and here during the self quarantine program or isoman they can have uh, some tips or information uh, how to keep the health, health status yeah to drink the uh, proper food and uh, uh, vitamin and many other things and so on also you can use some evolution tool like pulse oximetry digital spiko manometer digital thermometer to monitor yeah, the status or the condition of the people who are suffering with uh, COVID yeah, and so on. The patient monitor his condition independently following the doctor office. And sometimes we have to follow up, maybe we have to be transferred to the hospital and many other things. So this is the uh, KMK or the Keputusan Menteri uh, number HK10174. 829-2020 uh, from the new Ministry of Health, yeah, Minister of Health, Pak Budi Gunadi Sadikin. And uh, at the moment, there are 11 uh, provider involved, uh, especially in DKI Jakarta, to support the telemedicine service for free. Uh, but uh, I think the number is increasing. There are many uh, provider and doctors who want to be involved in this. And this is also uh, Minister of Health just also renewed the system to record all the COVID-19 cases uh, cases with what we call NER uh, new all record yeah uh, so the NER can be integrated into COVID-19 telemedicine uh, um, uh, once you got confirmed positive on many other thing yeah. Uh, from the hospital or from the uh, uh, laboratory clinic and many other things, data will be sent to the system of NER. And then uh, the patient will be sent a message from the ministry using WhatsApp, and then uh, they can be referred to conduct the self isolation or self quarantine. And also they can, has, uh, can have uh, support from online consultation using telemedicine and many other things. But again, in all, a new all record, this is a very good system. And also can be integrated to many other things like from the requirement scan you know if you're familiar with ehec when you go to travel let's say you want to fly from jakarta to jakarta then you already uh, recorded by the system and you already got the vaccine twice and you are a negative result from the pcr and so on just show the ehec application into the board and the gate and the airport and you are free to go but if not then you you are your travel will be cancelled and many other things like also the venue check-in if you want to visit let's say in the in the future uh, watching concert or visiting the uh, travel destination area and so on everything will be monitored by the system sometimes okay i think that's all of my presentation it's just sharing story experience i hope it will be useful for you and uh, we'll uh, give it back to the moderator five yeah thank you very much Yes, Arif. Okay. okay. <laughs> yep. Sorry. Okay, this uh, Surayo. I want to ask to Mr. Surayo about telemedicine at hospital, which not use electronic medical record database. Hello. Yeah. Uh, sorry. Hello. Yeah, sorry, technical. Okay. Oh yeah, but anyway, I, I got the the question. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> I think okay. I will try to answer it. It's yeah. uh, it's talking about the medical record, right? So if we uh, let me share something, if this is uh, possible.
Can you see my screen here? Yes. Yeah, okay. Uh, this is uh, some table of comparison between Ministry of Health to 203 2020 and the per council. Yeah? And here, uh, those two uh, regulations uh, updated by the, the newest one, uh, 6 of July, uh, Keputusan Menteri yeah, uh, 2020. Uh, it says that uh, in, during the telemedicine services, we should have a medical record. Either this record is manually or electronic, uh, electronically by the doctor. But again, uh, in the implementation, I believe sometimes it has some difficulty of that. But uh, uh, during the pandemic, uh, Ministry of Health is saying that this is, we call it a relaxation of the requisition. So meaning that uh, number one is serving the, 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 the patient, but uh, of course, you, you should make a medical record properly, but sometimes uh, if you cannot because some emergency situation, yes, it's okay. But uh, once the pandemic uh, situation over, uh, it's already finished, uh, it has to have the, the medical record. This is uh, already written in the regulation, so meaning that uh, we cannot avoid or maybe we can just uh, also uh, maybe warn to the medical doctor who has no medical record during the telemedicine service something like that. So meaning that uh, my answer is in, in this time, in the during pandemic situation, this is a relaxation of regulation. Maybe some sometime you cannot make it, that's fine. But uh, once the pandemic over uh, and we have a stronger regulation, you should have the medical record uh, recorded either man, just manually, which is maybe writing something on the paper and take the picture and send it to the, the system or uh, automatically using the electronic system, something like that. I think this is my first answer, Parif. Thank you. Okay, thank you, and, Bapak Surahyo. So, and the second, second. second question, I already also uh, read in the chat. This is talking about the uh, informed concern, right? Is it correct? Yes. Yeah, okay. Yes, again, also the same thing. Uh, Unfortunately, the regulation from the Ministry of Health during the during the pandemic, uh, either in Surat Edaran or in Keputusan Menteri 2021, it doesn't say exactly about the informed concern. But in the Per Council Number 74, it says that you have to have informed concern for the question. Uh, what kind of the 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 form or the the type of the informed person, either maybe you just record uh, by using like say WhatsApp conversation and so on, or maybe you have to make some a proper uh, a form, maybe using Google form and many other things. Uh, at least uh, you have to ask the permission of the patient to have it. But again, this is also like ambigu. This is a gray area because still in the pandemic area, per council has a more strong push. But in from the ministry, uh, it doesn't have the strong push. But uh, actually, uh, and during the telemedicine uh, services, we also should have the informed person. Also, if we're talking about the telecom, uh, sorry, private uh, telemedicine provider, yeah, let's uh, say using click Dr. Haldrick and so on. Uh, I think there is no informed concern properly. I uh, just some of them already have, but some of them not. So then, meaning this is uh, a gray area, but. Uh, based on the regulation, we should have the informed person. I think this is my answer. Yeah. Okay, thank you, Mr. Sayo. Uh, committee, yeah. would you uh, share the third question, please? Okay. I think I already got one answer. It's talking about the yeah. how to make so a diagnosis the, in there. So the, uh, another, 